healthcare professionals. We are trying to go live. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Round number two for a uh, cheesesteak live stream for today. Earlier today, we had a chance to, uh, oh, yeah, my, why is my camera off on the thing? Because uh, all, all I see is you right now on my phone. I'm like, uh, anyways, all right. So yeah, we are live for the second time today with the Philadelphia Stage Combat Workshop. And we have the amazing Jacqueline Holloway talking to us today. That's, that's me on me on me. <laughs> we are also trying to do a bit of Instagram Live while we're doing this. So ex please pardon if I am like, uh, 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 I'm doing. Um, so we're chatting today with Jax Holloway um, about cheesesteak, about Arte Valente, um, about life is crazy because COVID. And uh, yeah, if you are tuning in, make sure that uh, if you have any questions, post in the comments on Facebook Live or on our YouTube channel. Make sure you throw us some questions if you are tuning in. Um, I've got a couple of questions lined up, but we would love to hear from everybody. Um, if you, even if you don't have questions, sit, just say hi. Say hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, yes, I am still trying to get this thing going. We'll see how this goes. Um, I as, love it. As cool as hashtags are for hashtags for the kids, whatever. Um, if you have any questions that don't get brought up during this session, or you're tuning into this after the fact and you want to throw us some questions, feel free to shoot us an email at any point in time. Um, and first off, how are you, Jax? How are you doing? I'm really good. I miss you so much. I miss, I miss people so much. Yes. It, oh, yes. But I'm good. I can't. I you know I can't complain. I mean, it's not great. I haven't really been working at all. Mm -hmm. um, that's a huge bummer. Yeah. There's a couple of things here and there, but for the most part, I've just been at home. But I have a home. I, you know, I'm eating. I got, you know, David's my sugar daddy right now. He's paying all our bills. Um, we're we're doing good. Yeah. So I can't complain. Like as sucky as this whole thing is, we're safe. We're healthy. We're good. Exactly. So I finally got the Instagram thing going. So we're gonna put my phone over here. See if that'll stand up straight. Cool. Um, Cool. So since we are here talking about cheesesteak stuff, let's go to a first question. And do you go ahead? No, I just got excited because there are questions already. Oh, in uh, in the Instagram or no, no, you, you're going to ask a question. Oh, this is, oh. is it your question. I thought it was a question from the people. I thought the people were asking questions. My questions don't matter. You know, your questions matter very much. <laughs> I just like to feel popular. <laughs> I've been a lot <laughs> so popular. I love it. Um, I've been in the, home, the throes of homeschooling, second grade. I can't even imagine right That's now. No just... contact. Well, then let's let's bring our brains back to when we were freaking students, because Jax and I, Jax and I actually were students pretty much. We started roughly around the same time in the Philly area. Um, can you remember what your first cheesesteak was like? I do remember what my first cheesesteak was like. I, I have like, I, we were just talking about this before we went live. I have these snippets of memory from my first cheesesteak and I don't remember what year it was. I think, Terry, you said yours, your first one you think was 2007. Yep. Mine sounds about right because I think I moved to New York or no, I moved to Philadelphia in 2006 or 2007. It must have been 2007. Okay. So at that 
That must have been my first one too. And it was, it's so funny to think back. I mean, how many years ago is that? Some, do Somebody else do the math. At least, at least 13. God, 13, 13 years, years ago. And I know that like, you know, you you had people on earlier, like Belomo and Ian who created it like a thousand years ago, but 13 years ago is a long time. Mm -hmm. and we're babies. Yeah. I mean, the workshop, the workshop itself is only 21 years old. Take the away the workshop we drink. Exactly. The workshop is legal to drink this year. This is lemonade and not an Applebee's takeout margarita. There you go. Totally a lemonade. Um, yeah. So my first cheesesteak, I, I remember because I, I did stage combat in school. Mm -hmm. And John Belomo was actually one of my first stage combat instructors. Cool. And I knew that it existed as this thing that you do in theater school. I went to AMDA. But I didn't know that it was a thing outside of school. I thought it was like gym class for actors. <laughs> And it was just a class you had to take. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember the person I was dating at the time was in a show with Shosh, Shoshana Ru. Mm -hmm. And he came home and was like, oh, this girl I'm in this show with is like covered in bruises all the time. And she always like seems so beat up. And she says it's because she does stage combat. And I was like, what do you mean she does stage combat? What is this sorcery? It's like gym class for adult actors. And then that hooked me up with Ian Rose and I started taking classes with Ian Rose. And then immediately after that, really soon after that was my first cheesesteak, like a couple of months after. And yeah. it was so like mind blowing to like look around and see not only all of these different people from all over the country that come together to do this thing that you know this <laughs> this artist this actor's gym class but so many different kinds of classes yep. it like it blew my mind yeah it was like absolutely wild and and the whole time i was just like jaw on the ground of like who are these amazing nerds that are speaking my language and I don't know. At one point, I think Owen Timoney was pretending to be a raptor and was eating a slice of cake I out of Oliver Donahue's hand, I think is a memory that comes back to me a lot. I think <laughs> Ian, no, David Brimmer was being carted around on a, a hand cart for some reason. So that must have been a year where they were trying to do Roman battle tactics, because I know um, Ian was talking about that this morning, and somebody else was talking about that recently, too. I think it was uh, Granky was talking about it last week when we were talking about different uh, melees and such. Yes, that's exactly what it was. That's exactly what that class was, because we had like a whole sword class, and it was my first time with a sword, I think. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Not my first time with a sword. The first time with a shield. They're oh. different. Yeah. <laughs> They're different. Oh, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. And it, it hasn't stopped being fun. It's just always different kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm a teacher at it, it's just like a whole new level of like, <laughs> this is some dumb shit that we do. But you it, you're responsible for some of the fun. It's so great. It's so great. Yeah. So I don't know. That was a really long winded. What was your first stage combat workshop like? It was great. It was the cheesesteak. And it was great. <laughs> that's that's pretty much what what we were looking for. Like, what 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 is this thing that we've been doing for thirteen years? Mm -hmm. what, what was the start of it? Um, do you have any memories? Favorite memories from other past workshops? It's hard to tell them all apart. Mm -hmm. So, who did the mocap class? Um, I think there were two possible folks. It was either Michelle Ladd or Carrie Teal. Whoever worked on the Lord of the Rings. Carrie they both worked on the Lord of the Rings, did they? Oh, Carrie Teal? Um, they might have both. I know I know Michelle worked on uh Chronicles of Narnia at the very least, because I know she did kind of mocap and was talking a little bit about some of the creature movement, but Carrie did specifically a class on creature movement for mocap. Okay, yeah. 
Yeah, I remember both of those classes. I loved those. Those are a favorite memory. Yeah. Um, the first time I ever taught a class at the cheesesteak. It wasn't the first time I ever taught at a workshop, but the first time I ever taught a class at the cheesesteak is a favorite memory. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have a lot. All of my memories, the memories, simple memories, like walking from the the building, the one U Arts building, walking across the street, like laden with shields and swords and pikes and mm -hmm. like, just stuff and walking down the street of Philadelphia with City Hall right there. Mm -hmm. Everybody like looking at you like, what's wrong with you? That's a favorite memory. <laughs> Understandably so, yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. See if... I'm still yeah. getting an echo on my thing. If, if Instagram, if the, if the sound is wonky, let me know. I don't know why I'm still getting an echo. Hmm. I don't know. I... Oh, my Instagram. There we go. Yeah, I just in general. Yeah. Every every memory I have is my favorite memory. Aww. It's such a it's such a cop out answer. I mean, it's understandable, especially if if something has had such. Uh, so Preston actually just commented. Uh, Preston. The sound's been wonky on Instagram, but it's good on Facebook. So hey, it's been cool. I'm trying to figure it out. I think it's because I don't have my, I have my headphones in now, but they're not my regular ones. Me? Well, I, it might be better now. Okay. Yeah, because I've, I've, I've got Bluetooth uh, headphones kind of trying to take the sound from my, my phone, but I don't think it's been working. So eh, I'll, I'll figure it out. Um, yeah, like when when something's had such an impact on on your life, yeah, a lot of those memories are gonna kind of blend together. Like, um, there's certain details that I remember because my my brain kind of works linearly in mm -hmm. some cases. So I'll remember the year we did Battle of Pelennor Fields with Lord of the Rings um, and Carrie Teal was here and we had everyone who died from the melee got recycled back for the end for the Army of the Dead. And that was so fun too. That was probably one of my favorite memories only because I got to um, I geek out and be one of the people riding one of the big oliphants at the end. Uh-huh. Um, Robin Hood's Revenge is pretty pretty high up there in which which melees I remember just because of like how excited everyone was. That was a great melee. Mm -hmm. That was a great melee. Musketeers. I know they were talking about it earlier. Musketeers is a great melee. Yeah, like I know um, somewhere somewhere we've got uh, the. <sighs> Let's see if maybe putting it a little bit further away helps with the sound. Anyways, um, we've got video somewhere. I think I actually showed uh, the melee, the musketeer melee from your your Facebook page, I think. I think you're the one that's got the video of that. Yeah, I um, think that's the one I, did I edit that one? Maybe. No. It was either you or Ian, I don't know. I don't remember. I remember I edited one. I don't know how to edit. I don't know how to edit fights or anything, but yeah. I edited that one. And so I've watched it a million times and it never gets old. It was it was in the Great Hall. Mm-hmm. With the stone floor and the like balconies that went up and up and up and up. Not as pretty as the other main hall that that we used last year. Right. But just as like big. Yeah, like I think the 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 Great Hall at U Arts was much uh, brighter, mm -hmm. at least, and it and it felt like it had a little bit more utility because it had so many more stairs that you could use. But the Great Hall at Temple was is so much more picturesque. It's it's freaking crazy. That's right. It was it was U Arts, and then the Temple Great Hall. Right. I'm conflating the schools for some reason. All right. For some reason, uh, the Instagram bumped me, so just letting you know, I'm requesting. Uh, 
that again. Let's see how that goes. So, um, so yeah, let's 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 jump to this year and your involvement with the workshop this year. So, if you want to talk about what are some of the classes you're teaching this year. So I'm teaching a, a I'm teaching, teaching two classes, and one of them I'm actually well I was I'm co-teaching with Ian Rose. Okay. Then on the schedule it's just my name, so I don't know if Ian Rose bailed on me. So tag him in this. I will, and it might just be a typo error because I didn't I didn't realize that he was co-teaching that with okay. you. So I will I will go in there and fix that. I also didn't tell you that. I just I think I just assumed he would <laughs> since I had to submit it to him, I assumed he would do it. But I could have done that too. We love Ian Rose. Oh yeah, that that's why I want to teach with him. <laughs> He's great. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I'll 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 yeah, we're both teaching that class, unless he doesn't want to, and then it's just me. But it's a class on fight directing, and it's not a, it's not like a <clears throat> my goal of it. You know, I don't know what the hell Ian's going to talk about, but my goal of the class is not how to be a fight director. Mm -hmm. It's more of like, so when I started fight directing, I learned so much on the job, like on the go, that I, I wish I had known before, before I started. Like all of these things just started happening and I was like, I have to problem solve these situations, these things, and I don't know. I'm going back and forth between Instagram and Facebook just so that's where I'm keep moving. Same. My like um, I'm I can't quite figure out why my sound is being stupid, so I'm trying to keep it a little bit further away. So anyway. I, think, I think that might work too, keeping it further away. I think I remember doing that. Um yeah, so it's just like a, a things that nobody ever tells you about fight directing that I feel, in my opinion, you should know before going in. Right, yeah. how to craft emails or how to, I say how to negotiate contracts, but I say that lightly because I'm still figuring out how to negotiate contracts, right? Like, I'm not good at that. Yeah. But please pay me. <laughs> um, here's, mm -hmm. here's, here's what I think I'm worth. Please, please give it to me. Um, I don't know, stuff like that, how to, how to craft emails, how to market yourself, how to get hired again with the same people, right? Mm -hmm. So all of those things I want to talk about and then whatever Ian, I mean, Ian has been a fight director for way longer than me. So mm -hmm. he's got a ton more experience to tap into. So everything he's going to say is gold. Yeah. If he says that. I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> so uh, I think Ian has been commenting on this stream, but he's <laughs> commenting under the workshops. Since he's also an admin on that. I think the same issue that you were having that's hard uh, to figure out because this is what i got what we got in the comments uh, yeah and then this he's like oh, oh, yes. so he's he's yeah. still into the cheese stick uh the uh the fight directing co-teaching good um speaking one more one more look at the the facebook comments from quentin Colin Fields is my favorite because he was an orc and got to eat someone he forgets who he got to eat but yes. <sighs> Don't Never forget the names of people you devour, Quinn. Like, I feel like after comments taken out of context is so weird. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. It's 2020, nothing's weird. Amen to that. Nothing's right. weird anymore. Yeah, but that's one class I'm teaching, and we're teaching it with Ian. So we'll we'll get in touch with each other, and we'll figure out <laughs> what we're doing. But it's uh -huh. going to be great. Um, and the uh -huh. other class, I'm teaching a found weapons class. And I know there's a movie called Apocalypse Now, which I've never uh -huh. seen. But I was trying to, again, I'm really uh -huh. bad at naming. I haven't seen it either. I, I haven't seen it either. I can't name anything. I can't, I'm not creative enough to think of. No, that's not true. I can think of a million names. I'm not confident enough to think of names and then put it down on paper. Cause I always want to second guess myself and be like, they're going to hate it. But honestly they might and who cares? But anyway, it's, it's, we're in the apocalypse, right? Like we're, we're, it's happening. So 
how are you going to defend yourself when zombies come marching down your street? Because maybe they will. So it's basically about looking around your house or your apartment or wherever you're, you are right now and picking up, you know, something. How do I fight with this? Or how do I fight with this? Or uh, how do I fight with this? Which is a really adorable picture of my fiance. If Aww. Can see that. <laughs> How do I play with this adorable, adorable muffin? And it's 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 going to be half lecture and half like getting up on your feet and moving around. But I really want to dive into the like how you actually fight with found weapon. Because it is a skill and it is really difficult and you've got to know the properties of different objects and you've got to know what they're going to do and plan for them to do something you're not expecting and how you deal with it and how you choreograph with those things. So I'm really excited about that class too. And that's all I'm teaching, which is great because it leaves me super free to take everybody else's classes. And Terry, the lineup is fire. The lineup is insane and I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Um, there's not a single class that I don't want to take. And I'm not just like pumping up the workshop. I think this is the first workshop that there is not a single, first workshop ever in the world that I've been to. There is not a single class that I don't want to take. Yeah. Yeah. I am, I am psyched between Dem all of Demond's classes, which for anybody watching, um, if you go back to the schedule announcement, that we did this past Friday, Damon actually was able to join us and give a breakdown of kind of what he's going to be teaching in the classes that he's offering. Um, and he, he gives such an amazing breakdown and talk about where a lot of the, the weapon disciplines that he's, he's going to be teaching, where they come from, what kind of treaties that they've been, um, the, the organization he's the president and founder of, uh, Historical mm -hmm. Martial Arts Association. He, his organization has been actually taking a couple of uh, treaties and translating them from the original Arabic. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, yes, Janine, the, uh, the video that I'm talking about for Demand is available on the Facebook page. If you look in the live streams section um, or the videos section, it should go to, if you find the uh, class announcements or class schedule announcements video, Damon is in there and he's talking about everything that he's going to be teaching. Um, I'm hoping to have a similar kind of conversation like this with all of our other guest instructors like Brandy Lierd, who's our parkour expert um, from uh, Michelle Jean, who is our uh, Beijing opera, Peking opera expert. Um, Zhu -Zhu. Uh, there's a video that she sent us, a demo video that she sent us about Jingju and the that art form. And it's about five minutes long and I'm hoping to get it up on the Facebook page soon, just so people know kind of what they're signing up for. Um, and it's freaking incredible. The, the video is narrated in, I think, Mandarin, please don't quote me on that. Um, I, but the, the subtitles at the bottom are in English. Um, the subtitles are a little hard to read. So we'll see how it looks when it gets translated up on, uh, on the Facebook, but it's freaking incredible. Like I, I kind of got excited when I, when I watched and I'm like, oh, I want to sit in on all of the classes. Yes. So I have a question. Um, so I'm teaching mm -hmm. two classes. So that means there's, two, there's four total classes that I won't be able to take. If I were a student, and I'm really asking this question, I'm just gonna phrase it as like, if I were a student, if I were a student, would I be able to still take the class, the other classes that are in this same time section as the class that I am enrolled in, like later on? Like, is are they being recorded and can I access other classes? I guess is what I'm asking. So we're working on trying to get the okay from all of the instructors that, having their class recorded is with their consent. So, uh, hey Jax, are you okay with your classes being recorded? Hell yeah. Cool, just wanted to check. Um, so but, but people don't not come to my class because it's gonna be recorded because it won't be a good class unless people are in it. So. Exactly. <laughs> 
like so we're we're working on getting a confirmation from all of the instructors to see who is who gives consent to have their class recorded and with those recordings we're going to have them posted up um and accessible by anybody who's registered for the workshop um accessible essentially for rent or for avail um availability if i can do words words are things um, so i'm not drinking but you're the one slurring your words <laughs> That's kind of common for me. Anyways, a um, for a short period of time after the workshop is over. So yes, we're, we're hoping to make it so that um, that classic conundrum of, I love every class in this period, I have to pick one. We kind of solve that a little bit by having things recorded so that you can go back later and access the other classes that you didn't get a chance to watch or, or participate in before. Because there is so freaking much that is awesome this year. So, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can get the OK from everybody. And then, yes, we will put out a confirmation on the Facebook page saying that all of our classes will be recorded when we get that official confirmation from everybody. Awesome. That's mm -hmm. great. Because there's definitely, like, ev like, I'm not every single class I want to take, I want to have access to. Mm -hmm. So there's four that I cannot because I'll be teaching. Yep. Although I am half teaching with Ian. So I guess it's possible for me to be like, and now over to Ian. And then I duck out <laughs> and take somebody else's class. Oh, That's probably not ethical. <laughs> Funny you mentioned ethics because I literally just got done watching The Good Place. Uh, for the first time? Yeah, for the first time. Like, um, Sean helped me finish watching uh, The Good Place uh, completely Sunday night. That show is so forking great. <laughs> yes, it is. I watched it all the way through myself and then I got David into it. So I watched it all the way through a second time. And I'll watch it all the way through a five, six, seven, eighth, ninth time. It's so good. I'm in the middle of rewatching for the second time already. I only just finished the first watch through Sunday night. I'm already going back and rewatching. It's freaking great. That's um, so let's 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 reel this back to the cheesesteak. Oh right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so particularly for one of, one of the questions that I asked um, Ian and John this morning, um, and I wanted to make sure that I ask not just John and Ian who've been teachers and fight directors and fight choreographers for, for decades. Um, I wanted to make sure that you and me and Dan Granke and some other students who've been uh, students in the cheesesteak before, why, why is this particular kind of form of stage combat training um, important because we get we get in college like you were talking about how in college or in uh, at AMDA stage combat seemed like this was just something that was in college that it was gym class gym class for actors but the more that we've learned about it the more we understand how interconnected it is with so many other things and then you get to the point of uh, regional workshops where you see, <laughs> sorry, I just saw this comment from Janine. I'm guessing referring to uh, our various conversations. Thank Janine. you, Janine. Janine is the queen of multitasking. Amen to that, freaking hell. Um, but yeah, like particularly for regional workshops, I know Dan was commenting a little bit about how influential getting to go to his first regional workshop outside of New York was for him. Um, what What is important about regional workshop stage combat training, you think? Oh God, I think it's so important. So I might get on a soapbox. That's okay. <laughs> the internet, internet, you're mine for the next five to 40 minutes. So what you're not gonna get generally at regional workshops is you're not generally going to get, no, I'm gonna stop that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna retract what I just said. It, it's, it's, this is a great question and that's why I'm, str I'm stumbling over it. So it's, it, it's community-based. So first and foremost, 
what you're going to get at a regional workshop is you're going to get access to an entire community of like mind performers or people or not the performers aren't people but performers and people and and just folks around the globe who love what you love that you're not necessarily going to have access to in a stage combat class at a college or university or even a stage combat class in like a, a private school right you're it's you're going to meet people from all over the world who love the same thing that you love and i think that is for me the biggest benefit of regional workshops um but of course to me community is the most important thing in what i do my my company arte Valente, is based on forming a community, right? Creating community. You're also gonna get exposed to so many different styles and, and not just disciplines. You'll get exposed to a lot of different disciplines for sure. Like maybe you'll be able to t take acts or maybe you'll be able to take, um, I don't know, whip or something that isn't typically offered in a 16 week program. So you're going to get exposed to a lot of that. But more importantly, you're going to get exposed to so many people who teach differently. And I mean, like you could take three different single sword, basic single sword classes by taught by three completely different people. And they're going to be completely different experiences because they are taught through the lens of three completely different people. So you get community you get exposure to different disciplines, you get exposure to different human beings and ways that they teach and information that they have, right? I don't have the same information that Terry has, even if we're both teaching a, a single sort class, I'm not gonna teach it the same way Terry teaches it. I'm not gonna teach it the same way Ian teaches it, right? Every, every All three of us have something valuable to offer, but all three of us have something very, very different to offer. And you'll get that in one weekend or in one week or however long this workshop is. Um, I, I also find that if you really wanna dive into the pedagogy of certain disciplines or teaching styles, those classes come up a lot in, in regional workshops. Um, especially more and more as the SAFD gets more and more in, into teaching pedagogy and diving deeper into how to teach and why to teach and all of that. Um, you see a lot more pedagogy classes popping up, which I think is great lectures and, and the like. So yeah. And I mean, for my money, that's great. That's worth the price of admission. Easy right there. You get to build community. You get to be exposed to all these different, people and the way they teach and what they teach. Um, yeah, I mean, you're not gonna get a certification, right? Like stage mm -hmm. regional workshops are not there. That's what I was trying to say in the beginning. Regional workshops are not where you're gonna go to get a, a certification in a weapon, right? Like you're not gonna go to a regional workshop and suddenly learn everything you can learn about a specific thing. That's not what you're gonna get. But what you are going to get is like, what is it? What is, what is, what am I looking for? What's the term? Like if you imagine a waiter at a restaurant bringing it like a la carte almost like yeah. this cart of like amazing, delicious desserts. The, um, I think the, way that, the way that Ian's referred to say like the patty a couple of times has been, it's been like a buffet. Buffet. That's what I was looking for is buffet. How could I not think of buffet? <laughs> Instagram, why didn't you remind me of buffet? Yeah, um, it is. It's a buffet. It's a buffet. It's just a grab and go. It's like, I want a little of this, and then I want a little of this, and then, oh, this over here looks good. Mm -hmm. And if you, like, if you sample something, and you're like, oh, that was a mistake, and that happens, right? You're mm -hmm. like, that just didn't vibe with me. Then you just... <laughs> It's fine because it's just a weekend, right? It's an hour and a half of your time that you're like, oh, that didn't vibe with me. I'll mm -hmm. put that back. But how often do you go to a buffet and you leave thinking about all the shitty things you ate? Right. But you don't. You leave like 80 pounds heavier thinking about all the delicious jello you got to eat at the end of your meal mm -hmm. and the delicious 
meal you ate. And I think the thought that I was going to come up with next, actually, Mallory apparently is tuning in. Mallory! Commented, uh, her first experience with Sage Comet was at a regional workshop. And it was perfect because it was a sampling of everything she might want to get more of in the future. And I think that, that I think, is one of the bigger things that uh, regional workshops uh, do tend to bring. We, we get a chance to sample all of these different things but it gives you a taste of things you want to expand on and learn yeah. more about. So, 100%. And it gives you a taste of people you want to learn more from. Yeah. There are, there are people that I have sought out to train with specifically because I saw them at a workshop. Mm -hmm. I really vibed with what this person was throwing down. I love this. I want more of this. Right. Right. So, I'm going to track them down and I'm going to train with them more. Cause I want more of what they have to give. Yeah. yeah. I think for me, I tend to, to compare uh, regional workshops. Um, a lot of the times I'll, I'll compare them as a buffet, but I also like comparing it to say like going to home Depot because you're getting more tools. Yes. You're getting more tools. Oh God, to home Depot. Tool. Like these are because all of the things you pick up at a workshop, most of, not all, but most of the things you pick up at a workshop are tools that you can find useful in the future as you as you go on. It's something that you can build off of, not just it's an experience and then it disappears. It's it's those stepping stones, at least. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. Yes. I love regional workshops are great. And not just because we're on here promoting a regional workshop. <laughs> like right. they're they're really, really fantastic vehicles to just get your feet wet in a lot of different disciplines. Yeah. And particularly not just for the fight fam as as a base, but for anybody. Like the, one of the one of the things that I really want to pull in more are just the the average already established actor. The folks who've been in the game for a bunch of years and need to throw more tools in their tool belt, um, more stage managers, because how many times has a stage manager needed to be the fight captain for a show or needed to make sure that people aren't getting hurt in, in doing choreography? And if you have an understanding of what fight choreography is, then you get a better understanding of how to keep your actors safe. Mm -hmm. uh, Directors, understanding how violence is, can be incorporated into the overall storytelling. Like so many theater professionals as a whole, not just actors, can, can benefit from this. So I'm hoping that more, more folks uh, from the theater community at large are able to see this training opportunity and be able to come and join us. Yeah, but not even just the theater community. I have a, a lot of students that are not involved in theater mm -hmm. whatsoever. Right. And they take stage combat classes because it's fun, because it's yeah. a creative outlet, or just because they want to get in shape, or because they just want to move, or because they like swords. Yeah. Right? They want to play with swords. Yeah. So it's also a great opportunity for like you to just come in. And like you're not, you don't have to be a performer. You don't have to be in in theater or or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can just come and chill and learn how to fight with some swords for a weekend. Dang straight, yeah. Mm, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like all of all of the above. So like if because our our view viewer count has kind of bounced a couple of times. For, if anyone's just joined us. Make sure you're throwing some comments down in the uh, the comment section. Um, we've just been talking uh, for a while about what Jax's uh, classes are for the cheese stick this year, why stage combat training is important, what are some favorite memories. If you missed a bit of that, you can always go back and watch this live stream uh, when it's uh, uploaded on our Facebook page. Um, I know I've only got like one or two more questions left, but that does mean that we can't take questions from anybody who is tuning in. Yeah, um, listen, y'all, I'm playing D and D at seven tonight. So until that time, y'all, I got time to talk. And I'm like, I just want to let people know I'm looking at Facebook, but I'm also looking at Instagram. So like, if you see me, like, hey, 
I'm not just waving at my fiance who does periodically pop in to just wave because he's adorable. I'm oh. also waving at the other internet. Mm -hmm. If And if David at any point in time is up for just popping in and saying hi, he is welcome to pop in and say hi if he wants. Great. Let, no me, let me let him know real quick. David, because I know you're watching, because you're the best, most supportive fiance in the entire world, and I love you so much. If you want to come in here and say hi to the internet, you can do that. <laughs> he may or may not come in. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, <laughs> he's definitely watching, though, because he loves me, and he's great. <laughs> awesome. Um, and it's his birthday tomorrow. <coughs> Happy early birthday, David. That's not why he's watching. I just wanted to say it's his birthday tomorrow. <laughs> Are you pulling an Oliver? Am I what? Are you pulling a brimmer, a David, uh, like what Oliver usually does with brimmer? No, it really is his birthday. Oh, okay. also, internet, it's J. David Brimmer's birthday today. So wish him a happy birthday. Very That's sweet, yeah. Um. Just out of curiosity, which uh, what kind of what kind of character are you playing for D and D later? I am. This is my first time playing D and D. Okay. And uh, Caitlin Noble is is DMing it, and she's doing a freaking amazing job. I am playing a dragonborn wizard. Ooh. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Good. What? I don't know what I'm doing. We've been playing since the quarantine started, and I still don't know how to play D&D, but I'm having a great time. <laughs> That's the most important part. That And, yeah, I, I'll be honest, like, I started playing uh, a, a kind of an offshoot of D&D called Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard of that. Five, six years ago now. Um, and I'm still freaking wrapping my head around some of the ways you can combine stuff and overlay stuff. And uh, like, if you if you really want to hear some amazing kind of tactics and character building, talk to Sean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sean was actually slated to play a game, but then we lost our DM. So, but yeah, I I I don't know what I'm doing. But Caitlin's so great because she knows I don't know what I'm doing and she like she helps me out and everybody's so patient and wonderful. We're going on such great adventures. There you go. Yeah, as long as you're having people and lots of headaches because I don't think we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. That's always the case. We started a small business, so that was fun. That took like a lot of games. Mm -hmm. All righty. So I think this this kind of comes around to. Uh, a question that I was going to ask, but Mallory is also kind of reading my brain, apparently. Mallory, I'm loving the brain sink right now. So for Jax, how are you keeping up with training during quarantine and during COVID times? And do you have any other online workshops going on right now? Um, yeah, humble brag. I'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, no, keeping up training is definitely harder and different. Um Luckily, I live with somebody who is also, I would say also amazing in stage combat, but he's better at that than I am. I live with somebody who is incredible at stage combat, so that's helpful. Mm -hmm. But there's there's a lot of online opportunities for training that are popping up. I mean, there's the this workshop, of course. There is two other workshops that were, I think, um, run by Humble Warrior. Am I saying that right? Humble Warrior Movement Arts, I think. I think so, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. We did two other big workshops, plus there's other classes happening online. So there are things going on. Um, I've taken a few dance classes, which has been really, really helpful just to get my body moving. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, yeah, um, I've been doing a lot of like, I don't know, just a lot of workshops and classes, like one-off classes, yoga classes, just to keep moving. Um, they're out there. You have to look for them, but they're definitely out there. Uh, with Arte Violento, we are, for a while, with um, my friend Alex, we, we have a company together, The Hustling Creative, and we were doing morning workouts where we would work out every morning and we'd focus on a lot of stage combat techniques. We haven't been doing that for a while, but that was something that we were doing. 
Arte Valente is now getting ready to produce a series of online virtual classes. And we've got Sean McGarry coming up in just like a week or two. I think the 25th is yep. going to be teaching a whip workshop. So if you're interested in taking a whip workshop, at me about that. And I'll send you all the information. Sean is an incredible teacher. He's been teaching for like 15 years or something. Yep, that's He's really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. He made this incredible video on how to make a whip. So if you don't have a whip, we'll send you the video. You can make your own or he'll make one for you and we'll send it to you. Um, so hit me up if you're interested in that. We've also got Travis Station Marrero is teaching a class on stage combat versus stunts, the Venn diagram. So how stage combat and stunts kind of interact and how you can build up, take your stage combat foundational training and start to build some stunt foundational training. Um, Luisa Zhu is gonna teach a class for mm -hmm. us on, on stances, martial arts stances and finding your own individual stance. Um, that's good. That's an amazing, I've seen her teach a snippet of that before and it's mm -hmm. just incredible. It's one of the coolest classes I've ever seen. And Eli Lynn is gonna teach a class. I just spoke to Eli today. They're gonna teach Whoa. a class for us. Not sure what yet, but honestly anything Eli wants to teach is gold. Yeah. So I was basically like, whatever you wanna teach is what I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Eli's, Eli's actually teaching two classes with the Cheesesake as well this year. Eli's going to be teaching a uh, virtual intimacy 101 and dumb knife tricks. Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm super psyched for both of those. Yeah. Um, so those so are some options if you want to get moving and, and keeping training. Yeah, but that's just Arte Valencia. There's other stuff out there too. Like go, like find other stuff. Ian uh, is teaching classes, I think, through Humble Warrior. He's got weekly classes that are running. Ian is always an amazing person to learn from. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're out there. It's hard. You have to find them. It's so hard. Um, but they're there. You yeah. can do it. Yeah. Like, I know I've had, I've had a bunch of, uh, at least in the Philadelphia area, I've had a bunch of uh, events pop up for some of the theater companies and, and things that I follow. I've seen some, like, I, I saw a Laban workshop pop up, which I wish I, I had signed up for in time. Um, next time it comes around, if it comes around, I'm definitely jumping on that. Um, but yeah, like sometimes you gotta, you gotta look at the theater companies in your area and, mm -hmm and find like sometimes they'll offer kind of online things um, that to, to be able to keep their name out there and, and keep things going. Cause a lot of theater companies are, are struggling right now. So they're trying to get whatever they can um, going to keep, keep things afloat. Yeah, also look through Eventbrite. Yes. I signed up for a bunch of things on Eventbrite. So now I get notifications for certain things. Just scroll through Eventbrite and there's a ton of stuff and you'll find just workshops. I mean, it's hard cause uh, you know, they're not all stage combat, but any movement workshop is gonna be good for your body and your soul. And it's going to help your stage combat training. Yeah. It's certainly not gonna hurt it. Definitely, yeah. So if anyone's curious about, uh, more curious about anything that Arte Violenta is bringing up, that's the website that you can go to. <laughs> Uh -huh. It's also in the comment section of uh, the Facebook Live and the YouTube uh, Live video. Um, so if you are curious about more stuff with Jacqueline and David and the awesomeness that is those folks, make sure you check it out. Um, yeah, let's see. Any other? We got one more comment. Ian, uh, Ian is saying that Rapier and Dagger starts Monday and that we are both very kind. Listen, Terry's kind. I'm an asshole. I just happen to think very, very highly of Ian Rose. So mm -hmm. I have nothing bad to say about that man. Take mm -hmm. his classes. But don't get me wrong. I'm not a kind person. <laughs> very mean. I lack tact. Uh-huh. You're, you're about as mean as Eleanor. I'm just going to say. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eleanor. We're the same. For those who who might have stumbled in this after we were talking about the good place, we were we had we had a little sidetrack about uh, talking about the good place uh, earlier. So if you if you get a chance, to, Ian's like, ah, 
That's um, my dad. That's my fight dad. My dad is a thing. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah, brain is like. Pfft. So yeah, I think I think that's pretty much the questions that I had. Unless in the next like two minutes we get somebody else asking another question. Is there anything else that you want to kind of throw out there for Cheesecake Land or uh, into the into the universe? Yeah, I promised unicorn. Oh, speaking of unicorn. A, f a couple years ago, my students gave me this unicorn <laughs> for my birthday. And it's beautiful and it's so nice. And ah, it's so scary. <laughs> ah! Especially with the ring light in its eyes. <laughs> I feel like that makes it scarier. Oh my, oh my god, I just looked at the Instagram. Do it, do it again to the Instagram. Oh my god. Because it's so, it feels like it's so much closer in the Instagram for some reason. Because I'm in the camera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I wanted to show you this. I kept meaning to send you the pictures of this or tag you in pictures about this. Uh, I was at the supermarket probably about a month or so ago. And I saw in like the toy section, it had grow a unicorn. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna need to repeat that. It was grow a unicorn. It it looked like a little stump, and it was one of those like you put it in water, and like 24 to 48 hours later, it would grow into a unicorn, and it did. Oh, look at that little unicorn! It's much smaller than it was when it first was born because now all the water is dry. I was going to say that seems, if it's a grow, like it didn't yeah. grow that, unless it was like that big. Well, it, it grew and then shrank because this used to be like soaked with water. So yeah, it, right. it has since solidified into, let me go, bring it to the, uh, the Instagrams. <laughs> But yeah, like I have this on my desk now and I see this and I'm like, oh, hi Jax. Yay. <laughs> These are great. They're so majestical. So majestical. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh, Mallory. Mallory remembers the unicorn as well. She did. Mallory was in that class. She did give notes. <laughs> Linda. <laughs> All righty. I didn't name her, Glenda. There you go. She's so great, oh my God. She's the Arte Valenta mascot. I love it. So I think that's all we got time for. We were, gosh, we were almost sitting here yakking for about an hour. Um, so if you are curious, once again, if you're curious about anything that Jacqueline and Arte Violenta is doing, check out that website. Uh, they are also on, Facebooks on the Book of Faces, as the Rennies would say. I hate that. <laughs> can I just can I just be real? Is yes. there when I go yes. to the Ren Fair that I'm like, people are like, look at the Book of Faces, and it just like, oh, uh -huh. stop. That was just I don't need to say that. <laughs> it was mean, but I don't like it. Trust me, like. From, from a Rennie point of view, we are all trying to figure out better ways that haven't been overused to say various different things. Like instead of calling the cell phone a fairy box. A fairy box. I've never heard that before. That's cute. There's so, like, uh, Sean would know this better. There's something that somebody from the Philly Fair came up with that I, I need to keep in my brain because I want to bring that to other places because it was just so out of left field and it works. It really got your brain thinking, but it's, it's a way to try and keep it in period. Mm -hmm. Sure. As much as a Ren fair can, yeah. but yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I put the uh, Facebook link to the RT Violenta page. Uh, Quentin is also not a fan of the Book of Faces either. Quentin knows what's up. Quentin does know what's up. It, with that, hold on, can you put that comment back up again on the screen? It's this comment with the picture is, <laughs> I don't know why, but my brain is like, yeah, they go together. Yes, they, they go together. 
So if you're curious about anything, Arte Violenta, you can go to, uh, I put up the Facebook link in the uh, comments of the Facebook live stream. Thank you. You can go to this website. And speaking of websites, make sure you go to this website and register as a student. We are putting, within the next 24 hours, we are going to make the class sign up go live. Yes, the schedule is up so you can get a preview of what all the periods are, what all the classes are. So in the next 24 to 48 hours, the class sign up will go live and it will only go live to people who have registered. So make sure you register as a student ASAP so that you can have first dibs on whatever class you want to take. Terry, do I have to register? To be classes? able to take other classes? No. Yeah, I know things are limited. So I, I really want to take classes. I love these classes so much. I mean, you're welcome to, but you don't have to. As, a, as an instructor, we can we can make sure that you get into to different things. I could, because I'll be yeah. in every other class. You are golden for, for classes. Um, yeah. But if you are not an instructor <laughs> with a workshop and you want to take all of these awesome classes, go to the website and register ASAP. You can also go to the Facebook page that this live stream is on that links you to this link and you can get to the registration page. So let's see. So I think that is it. If you have tuned into this live stream at the end and you are curious about anything we might have talked about in the beginning, this video will go live on or uh, will be recorded and uh, put up on the Facebook page. I'm going like this because up here is my tab, like lifting it to the tab. <laughs> um, but it will be accessible on uh, the Facebook page from this point on. If you have any questions that come up that didn't get answered in this live stream for either the workshop itself or for the amazing Jacqueline Holloway, you can always shoot the shoot us an email at phillascw at gmail.com. Um, let's see if we can get this hashtag going. Trend it. Trend, Trend it. it. Yeah. I'm looking at let's, let's see. Uh, I swear I can spell. Terry, while you're typing something in, I just, oh, where did it go? Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, let's see if we can get this hashtag going. So either this hashtag, fill SCW 2020, or Swordtober, or if anybody else has any other hashtags we think we should do, so fire, maybe. Maybe this hashtag, I don't know. If we have any other hashtags that we want to uh, get going, let's try it. Jax, you have something you want to show us real quick before we yeah. get Yeah. So, um, Terry, the poster behind you, uh -huh. I really, really like it. Mm -hmm. I have my own. Yes. And it sits right next to my desk. And when I say I have my own, it's actually David's and I've just co-opted it. And I put it next to my workspace. Uh-huh. For for anybody who needs a closer look, this is the uh, the poster Jax is talking about if my camera would uh, focus. Yeah, Karen Hallian is amazing. I love her artwork. Uh, she does some amazing stuff. She has a, a series like this but it's it's her uh, his series or him series, and it's got really influential uh, positive masculinity kind of figures. Like it's got uh, Mr. Rogers, it's got Bob Ross, it's got it's got Lavar Burton, it's got lots of Lin Manuel. I think is on on the the he uh, he series uh, version of that, which is really freaking cool. So I love Karen Hallian. I, I have a question because there's two people on this that I don't know who they are. Okay. And it's the person before Hermione. Let's see. Uh, let me Maybe see. It's the same one. Ours might be a little different. I think you have one with me. Are you looking at this one? Yes, her. Um, did you ever read uh, or see A Wrinkle in Time? Yes. That's the girl from the from the uh, the live action one that just came out. 
Hell yes. Four years ago. Yep. And then who's the last one? This one? No. No. This is a this little one. different. No. You're you, different. you have a couple more than me. This what this one. This one? Yes. She's from Star Wars. Oh, that's um, why I, I didn't know Star Wars is. Clone Wars. She I'm not familiar with. I will admit um, that is going to be a good question for folks that are uh, a little bit more up on uh, Star Wars Clone Wars than I am. Uh, I don't know. Also, who by the way, have a, a Nicholas Odson here. I don't know if you know Nick. I Nick. did. He's so great. Nick is amazing. Oh my gosh, I, I love I love Nick. So cool. We are. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for this round of chit chat. Th Jax, once again, thank you so much for uh, jumping on this and uh, getting a chance to chat with us. Thank you um, for having me on this. I love this. You're crushing. Can I just say, Terry appreciation moment? You are crushing this cheesesteak. I mean, you've crushed every cheesesteak that you've been involved in, but like this one, like. It's online and it's an apocalypse and everything sucks. And you are making this like, I'm so excited for this. I'm so excited for this. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. My pleasure. And uh, like, I don't know about anybody else, but I know having something to look forward to right now, especially in the next month as as things are going to start getting crazy as we get towards november 3rd um having something else positive to keep our mind on and keep our heads up with is going to be really big so um i don't know about anybody else but i know for uh some folks uh halloween in in some traditions jacks i know when you went to uh was it panama Guatemala. Guatemala. Uh, Day of the Dead is is a big tradition. And I know, at least for me, last couple of years, I've been trying to remember certain folks that have passed. Um, so being able to be with Fight Fam and maybe we can find a way to remember various Fight Fam that are no longer with us, have a chance to gather and keep up the, that memory. Maybe we could do something. There's lots of different things that we can do on Halloween. When we're inside, we're stuck. We're like, what the hell are we going to do? You know what? Screw it. Let's find a way to get online, reconnect. I know sat that Saturday night, I'm trying to figure out ways to do like screen share, discord, do like a movie night because, hey, the Mandalorian, first episode of the new season of Mandalorian premieres on Halloween. Um, Maybe do like a hocus pocus Halloween kind of. I know. I'm yes. Can I do one quick? Can I throw out one more quick thing? Yes. So right before the cheesesteak on Thursday, mm -hmm. our event is doing a virtual holiday spooktacular where we're doing a reading of classic Halloween movies. Ooh. So if you're going to do the cheesesteak, why not tune in? And Terry, if you want to do a reading of something, let me know. You're in. If you and Sean want to do something, whatever. But uh, yeah. so tune into that and then do the cheesesteak. And then, yeah, let's end the cheesesteak on like a super Halloween bash. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Send me send me the info the, about the, the, the reading thing. I'll, we'll do I'll, it right after this. Yeah. That'd be cool. Cool. All right. So, yeah. Uh, Lots of lots of awesome. Thank you for loving seeing folks. Nick saying all the amazing fight peoples. Uh, yep, Aww. I think we are. We are definitely a little over time. But that's I don't want to stop. It's so fun. <laughs> well, I don't know about y'all, but as far as uh, keeping up with training and movement, uh, it's it's about time for me to go get my own but whooped by by training because i've been i've been trying to get get my butt back into shape and a, a friend of mine is helping me uh, as a personal trainer so i'm supposed to meet him at 6 30. so um, i gotta get scooting so that i can get my butt whooped and come back to the apartment and pass out from whatever anyways nice i'm gonna play D and sit on my ass yay sounds good <laughs> tomorrow to me. i'll do something Drink plenty of Mountain Dew and, and uh, Cheetos for me. 
<laughs> Ew, gross. <laughs> no. All righty. Thank you. Once again, Jax, thank you so much for jumping on. Thank everybody who's so tuned much. in, thank you for tuning in. We love you, everybody. And uh, again, get to the cheese steak. Where'd that link go? There it is. Register. Register. All righty. And uh, we'll catch y'all later. All righty. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.